Alrighty, today's webinar topic is going to be on managing graphics and clip art inside of Inksoft. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and sign in as an admin. And the first thing I want to share with you is what oftentimes is the most confusing for users is under my account. So in Inksoft, anytime an end user creates an account, they're going to have my account. In fact, I would invite you to create a fake account from your own Inksoft powered web business and use maybe a personal email address. That way you can see what an end user sees when they log in. So effectively, they're going to have a welcome message, you know, welcome, the first name of the, uh, the person logging in, sign out, and then they're going to have my account. Uh, you're going to have your own account as well, being an admin. So here it's going to display all of your account information. So here's my email address, first name, last name, the date my account was created, whether I'm opted in to receive the newsletters. Now here, your end users or you can actually edit your user settings. So if you want to change your email address or if you decide later to opt out for an email or opt in, you can do that by clicking edit settings. Now, most importantly, the controls here on the left-hand side, account options. So here, there's a few important options here. We're going to have my images and my designs. But before we go on to that, I'm going to get my clip art out of the way. So what we've done in Inksoft is we've wanted to create a community where possible. And if you click on my clip art, any Inksoft license holder has the ability to create a gallery of artwork. Now you can create a gallery and effectively you can give it away for free and that's to other Inksoft license holders or you can sell it on a monthly or annual basis or make it a one-time transaction. So if you have proprietary, very unique art content and you actually want to license it and sell it in Inksoft to other license holders, you can do so by creating your own clip art gallery. Now I'm going to open up another window here. I'm going to show you a clip art gallery that I've created and made available for free. And anybody can go and subscribe to this. So if I go to my demo site and click on clip art, I've subscribed to my very own clip art gallery called Tattoo. And under the Tattoo Gallery, these are all of the vector designs I've uploaded into this particular gallery. And again, you can go and uh, subscribe to this. It's uh, a free gallery. I'm going to add some more cool, you know, sort of vector tattoo style fashion artwork. Um, this was just to create an example. So you can see here that I have a few offline galleries. So I have another one called Tattoo Designs, Stock Rhinestone Designs, uh, an abbreviation DD. So those are offline. So I actually have four different galleries, but you can see that this one now, the uh, Tattoo Fashion Designs is currently active and it's set to free. So you can see all the subscribers. These are people that have subscribed to my free gallery of content. And what I can do is I can click on this gallery and I can edit uh, this particular gallery. So if I want to make changes like rename uh, this particular gallery, if I want to upload some additional elements into this gallery, I have the ability to do that. I can also create subcategories. So I could have tattoo and then underneath that I could have, you know, um, vintage tattoo. I could have modern. I could have, you know, fantasy, whatever it may be, you know, tribal. So I could create a sort of a core gallery of artwork and I can create its subcategories. So this is, of course, optional. I just figured I'd start by showing you this. We're going to kind of go linear through today's presentation. Now I also have the ability to uh, do a number of things. I can select all of the elements I've uploaded. I could remove those. I could remove the entire gallery. You could also choose to set a cover design. So I've selected this rose with a banner. I've selected that to be the sort of the cover flow or the cover image that represents this category. So if we go back here in time, you'll see that I've selected again this tattoo rose uh, element to be the image that represents the gallery for this particular file. So if you do have artwork that you think you could sell or license in the system, feel free to create your own gallery. Um, the system will basically take you through the process. Um, you'll agree to the terms and effectively you get 70% of the transaction of the sale. So this is also a cool way to share artwork um, you know, with the community. You know, this is a way to help out your fellow Inksoft brethren. Uh, so again, this is creating a custom gallery in Inksoft. Now make sure to subscribe to these. Uh, you can subscribe to any of these in Inksoft. And let me show you that. We're going to click on config from this uh, other window. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to manage clipart subscriptions. And this is my opportunity to subscribe to different galleries of artwork. So under global settings, clipart, I can go to clipart subscriptions. And here I have the ability to manage my artwork subscriptions. So when this page loads, you'll notice here, this shows you clip art galleries. 
and this shows you all of sort of these galleries here. So you can see Amazing City has uploaded these really cool vintage style, um, you know, pinup girl uh, themes. Um, so you can see all these different por portfolios here, and then you can click one. So here's JP Hunt. You can click on My Galleries, and then you're gonna have the ability to either subscribe to my gallery or remove the gallery. So you can see right now I've subscribed to my very own gallery. I can remove that, um, so it's not gonna display my Inksoft store, and you can see the terms here, and this one's free. So oftentimes there's actually some really cool free content. You have the ability to subscribe to those or remove those at any time. So now that we've covered the Inksoft uh, powered galleries and subscriptions, let's move on to talking about my clip art. Now, one of the easiest ways to in introduce clip art into your system is by going to my account and clicking on my images. So think of this as your very own clip art that's warehoused in your Inksoft web stores. So very, very uh, and simple way to, to upload art content in the system. So I can browse for an image, and if I'm just gonna upload one image, I'm typically just gonna click browse. Now there's also a batch uploader. So you can see right below, if I hover my mouse, it says use simple upload option. This is gonna let you upload up to five files at one time. You can batch upload five graphics at uh, one time. So you can use these controls here. So again, this is uh, the ability to upload a custom piece of clip art into your Inksoft system. Now once you upload a piece of clip art, you can add it to a store. So here I have this tattoo style banner. And let me show you first, we're gonna go backtrack here, and I wanna show you the very first time you add a piece of clip art to a store, what's gonna happen is it's gonna copy the logo for that store and assign a specific category. I was you know, manipulating this particular store theme here so I can't see my options, so this is a bad example. Let me see if I can choose another store where we've actually uploaded a piece of custom clip art. So if I click on clip art from the main navigation, you'll notice here that we have Hillcrest Viking. So you can see we have our core logo here. You can see how it actually copies over the logo and establishes that for a custom clip art category. So I've uploaded one piece of clip art into Hillcrest Vikings. So for the very first time when you add a, a clip art element to a store, it's gonna adopt the logo for that particular store. So let me give you one more example. Let's go back to our core Inksoft demo site. I'm gonna click on clip art, and here you can see, here's our core Acme Apparel Company logo, and you can see it duplicates that anytime we create a custom clip art gallery inside of Inksoft. So if I click on that, here you can see all of the clip art I've uploaded to this particular gallery. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add this tattoo banner. So I'm gonna click Add to Store, click OK. Now notice this, it, uh, it says Remove from Store, so you have the option to remove it. I'm gonna refresh this page, and we'll now see that tattoo banner element that we just added displaying in this particular store. So usually this takes a minute to populate here. Let's refresh this again, see if we can get it to display and cooperate. So again, usually this is a cached cycle, meaning it's storing some of this information. So sometimes this takes a minute to populate and display. Now what I wanna point out is I can navigate to a store. So let's go over to, um, you know, let's go to, we'll go back to our Hillcrest Vikings store. Now anytime I navigate to a store, I'm still signed in, which means I can click on my account and I can click on my images. And here I have the opportunity to now add a design to a store. So here is basically following me is all of the artwork I've uploaded and saved into my own custom clip art gallery. So now that I'm in uh, you know, this Hillcrest, Viking Hillcrest store, remember we only had one clip art element in our custom gallery. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add that same tattoo style banner to this particular store. Um, so you can see that your, think of this as a sort of a traveling book of clip art and you can publish all of your clip art from your master folder into each particular store. So now if we go back to the clip art section here, let's see if that has now populated. Uh, it's doubtful, it's gonna take a minute here because again, this is all cached. Usually you're gonna have to clear your browser history, but now we would see one extra banner populate in this particular store. So let's go back here in time, let's go back to config. So again, from my account, you have the ability to upload a singular piece of clip art, or you can also upload five at one time. You can also add these clip art elements to specific stores. So if I upload a very unique design that's a, a, you know, a Trojan, and I wanna add, add it to a, the Trojan web store, I would navigate to that web store, 
and go ahead and add that or associate it with a store. Now one of the other functions that you'll see in this area is you have the ability to create a design from clip art that you've uploaded. So let's say I want to grab um, this you know, sort of uh, tattoo style banner. I can create a design by selecting, as the name implies, create design. Now when I do that, it's going to go ahead and take that piece of artwork and you can see that I'm still in the Hillcrest Viking store and it's going to bring that right into the design studio. I want to create a design from this piece of clip art. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of switch gears and we're going to talk about creating your very own custom templates. So let's zoom into this particular theme and now we have this really cool three color vector uh, tattoo style banner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size and I'm going to place this and position it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add text into this. So I can click the function that says add text and I'm going to go ahead and place that uh, above this banner. And what I may choose to do at this particular junction is add you know custom you know or whatever just add some descript message in here so I'm gonna put in AZ tattoo so let's go put tattoo you know I'm gonna change the style of text I'm gonna do that first so I'm gonna go choose gothic since that sort of uh, probably aligns pretty closely with um, you know tattoo style designs so I'm gonna go choose a cool gothic font here and make that font substitution and I'm gonna make the Z lowercase and we're gonna basically create a quick design template. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I may give this a curve. I may choose to color this. Maybe let's make this a distinct color so it pops. Let's make this red. And I'll position this on the particular banner wherever I want it. So anytime that you create a, um, a design, it has to have a text element in it. So now we have a text element. And this could say your text here. This could say school name here. You could make this um, whatever you want. Well, notice if you look closely, notice where my text field is. We have sort of a box constraining that text field. Well, there's intelligence there. So after we save this, this is going to now be a design. We've converted a piece of clip art into an interactive design template. And I'm going to do that by clicking Save. So I'm going to click Save and I'm going to name this AZ Tattoo Company. And whatever I name this, that's going to be public or visible. So make sure to give this accurate descriptions. You know, don't be too um, sort of cryptic. So I'm going to name this Arizona Tattoo Company. I should probably spell that pro properly. I'm going to click Save Template. That is now a design template that's going to be interactive in Inksoft. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this or, or delete this from the screen so you can see exactly how this works. So let's go ahead and remove these two elements. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate away from the Design Studio. I'm going to go right back to my account. We'll go ahead and acknowledge, yes, we want to leave the Design Studio. Now what I've done is I've taken a piece of clip art from my clip art folder, my master gallery of clip art, and I've moved, I've converted that into a design and I've saved that. Anytime you save a design, it's going to now go into my designs. So I'll click my designs and here you can see on the left hand side, as soon as this page refreshes, you'll see now Arizona Tattoo Company and you'll see this banner and you'll see text on it. Same process, add to store. So I can remove or I can delete a design template. I can also add it to a store. Same process that we just talked about. I could navigate to a specific store. This is a tattoo style theme. Maybe I want to save this design template in, you know, Arizona Tattoo Company's web store. I could navigate to the store, click on my account, my designs, and I could add that strategically to a specific store. So let's add this now to Hillcrest Vikings. We'll just add this to the store that we're already in for sake of brevity. So I click add to store. The page will refresh and you'll be greeted with your template management tool. And this is going to be for this particular store. So here's all the design templates and art content that I've populated in this particular store. So you don't have to do anything from this junction. However, there's some additional function in this environment namely the ability to click on this little pencil icon. So pencil means to edit and anytime you hover your mouse over an icon in Inksoft it will display uh, its function. We also have the ability to copy a design and this is a really powerful tool. I could copy this theme and basically clone it and create a duplicate. So you'll notice a lot of the Inksoft design templates there might be 20 variations uh, but there'll be a variation for each mascot. So it's a great way to build a master theme and then maybe leverage that theme and copy it to use in a different project. Maybe you want to give a, you know, three unique designs that are all messaged 
differently. So you can copy and clone a design template. And of course the red X, we all know what that means. That means delete. And this also shows me the date that I uploaded this file. So here we have uh, April Fool's Day. So what I'm gonna do now at this stage is I'm gonna go ahead and click on that pencil icon to get some of the advanced editing controls. In this environment, you have the ability to do several things. First, at the very top, we're gonna to sort of work in this main window here. I can make this customizable or uncustomizable. So we have to make the decision, do you want this to be a design that your clients can access and they can add it to a product, but they can't change it? So leaving it customizable will let the clients change the text, the colors, the placement, they can edit the snot out of it. So make that decision whether this is gonna be important or not. Now we have the ability to make this a hidden design, so it's not visible to the client. Um, you know, Maybe we're creating some designs in advance of an event or we're rolling them out on a specific date. We just wanna do all the legwork in, in advance. I have the ability to do that here. Featured, I have the ability to make this a featured design, meaning it's gonna display on the home page for whatever web store I happen to add this theme into. And I think this is an important uh, consideration. I would always advise take 20 really cool design themes, 20 really cool products, and feature those on your home page. Because after all, this is advertisement. This is, you know, you need to have a good array of themes, maybe, you know, something for every shopper. In, in this window should be, a very you know sort of diverse sense of products and graphics so you can cater to every shopper somebody wants something you know traditional collegiate something that somebody that wants something maybe more tribal or tattoo style i think that's an important consideration here really exemplify your capabilities in artwork and products uh, again we can uh, parental controlled so if you have something that's uncouth you can uh, mark this as parental controlled um, so it's only going to be uh, uh, be visible um, if, if we mark this as shown, if we give people certain permissions. So uh, this is probably a function you're not going to use uh, very often, but nonetheless, it's visible. Keyword searchability. So I'm going to put in tattoo, tat, uh, maybe um, tribal, um, banners, banner. You know, Put in all of the keywords that would relate to this particular theme. I'll put an AZ for Arizona. I'll spell out Arizona. Um, you know, Whatever else would be appropriate for this particular design. Maybe gothic. And this, all of these terms will become keyword searchable in Inksoft. Now, a few other functions that are pretty important in this particular window is we have the ability to change the design name. So if you later decide, you know what, Arizona Tattoo Company is not descriptive enough, I'm gonna change this to Tattoo Banner. I could rename it. I can also change the product and style. So the important thing to note, anytime you associate a design in the design studio, whatever product is in the design studio will become the suggested product. So if you wanna change the color or the style, in fact, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna make this associated with white and red raglan jersey. Now, if I were in the design studio when I were first creating this design template, if I were to go choose a different product like a cap or a mug or a mouse pad or a hoodie, and if I save it, it's gonna remember that product. There's intelligence and a connection there. So this lets you go make a modification of what featured product this design would display on. Now, one last important function is you have the ability to create, in fact, I'm gonna save my changes in this particular window because we're gonna go on to a different path here. So I'm gonna save the changes uh, for this particular option and here the page will refresh, but I'm gonna go right back into this edit. I wanna show you one other val valuable function and this is the ability to create what we call a static product. Now, if you're not familiar with a static product, let me give you an example of that. So I'm gonna click in this product preview here. I'm gonna click on one of these thumbnails that has a t-shirt with a graphic on it. So a, a static product is a product that already has a graphic on it and you don't want your clients to edit it. You, don't, you wanna basically populate a web store with a, some pre-decorated items. And this is so vitally important because don't forget there's two types of shoppers. Those that wanna decorate and personalize and be in control and those that just wanna buy something cool and check out. So cater to the two types of shoppers and this static function is a really great way to do it. Okay, so we clicked back on this tool. We have a product selected. Notice this option here where my mouse is ho hovered. We can customize this design. We can re-render the design. Most importantly is I can create a static product. So what I'm gonna do now is take this Arizona tattoo theme that we created. And what I'm gonna do is I can now choose a product that I wanna create a static design from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I want this Arizona tattoo design. I want this on a hooded sweatshirt. So what I could do is I can create with a singular color. So here we have white and black or I can create with all colors. So if you have a product that's in your web store, and in fact, I've limited the products in this Hillcrest Viking store. 
So you can see for this hoodie, this may normally have 10 different colors. I could take this Arizona tattoo design and I could automatically make this design populate on this product and make it for sale on all of the different colors. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and create this. Eh, we have two colors. We'll go ahead and create this hoodie on white and black. So I'm gonna say create with all colors and it's gonna give us the option to say, yes, yeah, you know, do you wanna proceed? We'll go ahead and say okay. Now the page is gonna refresh. What Inksoft is doing is taking that design, populating it on those two color products. It's creating a brand new product in the system. And the next stage is we're gonna be in the product, the edit product screen for this brand new static product that we've just invented. So get good with this function, um, practice it a few times and it will be like autopilot. This is a really important way to, again, furnish and decorate, pre-decorate a store. And let me give you another example of uh, how we do this while this other uh, page loads. This typically can take anywhere from you know a minute to process, uh, to, depending on how many product variations you're creating. So if you're creating a design on 13 colors, it may take a little bit longer. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna navigate over to, uh, we'll go back to Hillcrest Vikings in, in this different window. I think I have some examples here. So if I click on products, you'll notice this, and our window's done rendering here, so we'll come back to this in just a second's time. So notice this, here I have a Port & Company hooded sweatshirt, and notice there's a two-color design that's already on this particular um, product, and you can see that display here. This, again, is an example of a static product. So all the client can do is add this into the shopping cart and check out. There's no other function, but here you can see that there's a few different colors. So as they hover their mouse, do you see that there's a graphic on the ash on the athletic heather and on the orange ver variation of this product. That took but a click of the mouse to create. So again, this caters to the people that don't wanna decorate, they just wanna buy something cool. Make it easy on your shoppers. Okay, after the window populates here, you'll see that we're in the new edit product screen. And here, we're gonna do something important. I'm gonna change the name of this to official, you know, um, I don't know, we'll change this to, um, Vikings, this isn't a Viking theme, Viking hoodie. I'm not very creative today. I can, at this stage, change the supplier and the manufacturer. Maybe I'm gonna make myself the supplier and the manufacturer, or, or modify this any way you want, it's up to you. You can also change the SKU. If you're creating a very unique product, you have the ability to go and uh, modify the SKU. You can see how long the SKU is because it's taking the identity of the graphic that you created, and it's gonna add the product variation to that. So I'll go back and maybe change this to Viking hoodie stock design 12, you know, whatever is relevant. I can also change the pricing. This is pre-decorated. This is a two or a three color job. Um, so I'm gonna mark this down to $29.99. I already have Plastisol transfers generated. Maybe my cost on this with the transfer is um, 12 bucks. So I'll dial in those details here. And that's effectively the process. You can also start to consider what sizes you're gonna make available. So remember in this screen here, it shows sizes small through XL. Well, if I've created a Plastisol transfer and I've made it, um, I just clicked save on accident. No, no big deal, we can go back and edit that particular product. Uh, the point is you wanna carefully consider what sizes you've made available because those will populate in this particular region here. So be very mindful. Okay, I have one design, I created it you know, six inches by you know, three inches. Be aware of um, how, that, how that's gonna impact you know, your, your process. So let's go back to store products here. Uh, I, hopefully I hit saved, I saved this properly. Uh, let's see if we can find this particular theme in here. Uh, here we are. So we can see down at the very bottom, it puts this in order from uh, oldest product to newest product. Here we have this hooded sweatshirt. Uh, you can see Arizona Tattoo Company, available color. So what I can do is click on that particular product and edit it if I should choose. I have the ability to remove it from the store. And ideally, if we go back to our product listing here, we should see that uh, product display in this particular window. So here we are with a Port & Company hooded sweatshirt and you can see that that tattoo style design is automatically on that hooded sweatshirt. And it really adopts the same imprintable area that uh, you had when you originally saved the design. Now I hope you can see the connection of when you're creating a design in the design studio, choose the product that you want to create a, a static design with because then you could measure the imprintable region. So let's say that I saved this design on a mouse pad. Well, that's not gonna share any relation with the imprintable area that say a hooded sweatshirt would. So I did create with this with all colors. So you can see this if I hover my mouse over these different thumbnails, you can see how that now populates and affects or impacts this particular design. 
So very, very powerful control and tool set here. Great way to you know, furnish designs that are in the system and you control this whole process. So that is the static product function inside of Inksoft and you can see if the client clicks on the image they can get a large high res preview to see what that looks like and this took you no time to create. So definitely practice this tool um, because it will yield a lot of really good benefits. Now remember we added a design to the store and we made it keyword searchable under AZ for Arizona, Arizona, Tattoo, Gothic, all of those different keywords. So see I just typed in AZ and you can see that particular design display. If I type in Arizona or Tattoo again this design will display. Now we also save this design so it could be customized. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click, and by the way, you can see all the other designs that uh, are associated with Tattoo, that gallery I showed you earlier. Now that I have this design and I marked it as customizable, which means the client can now customize it, they can go right back into the design studio and they have the opportunity at this junction to uh, transform this particular design. So as I mentioned, that there, there is intelligence in this design. Remember, we, we associate this with a red and white Raglan jersey, and we, we specified this as interactive text, which means if I go and change this text, I'm gonna type in Arizona, you know, um, state. You can see how that just populates into that particular field. So it remembers the curve, it remembers the space, and now your clients can do you know, things like transform this, they can you know, reduce the space, they can you know, transform this and position it wherever it's appropriate and they're good to go. So that's the process of creating a static design and a static product, uh, creating your own design templates, managing clip art. We'll talk about a few other functions that you need to be aware of. Uh, we've just talked about a, uh, a uh, well, actually we're gonna graduate to it right now, now that we're here. So for every one of your Inksoft powered web stores under store controls, you'll have a design drop down menu. You also have clip art drop down menu. So again, you can tact sort of, you know, you know, strategically manage artwork on a store by store basis by using these two drop down menus. Now, as you recall, every time we do a webinar, we tell you there's two or more ways to do something in Inksoft. So, um, what we're going to do now from design the design drop down, if I click on design templates, this will show me all of the designs that I have enabled in this particular store. So I've made a very narrow range of designs available in this particular store. And sometimes that's prudent because you know the more decisions and choices you give to people, sometimes that doesn't always work in your benefit. So right now we don't have a huge range of designs, but what if I wanna add more? So on the left-hand side under management options, I can add more templates to store. So what I'm gonna do at this stage is click on that function. And here we have a few options. We can uh, upload art content to add to the store. Then we can convert it into a design. So again, the ability to import artwork, build a design out of it and make it available in your system. I also have the ability to create a new custom design. So this will basically move you to the design studio where you can go and grab a design template or clip art and build a theme. You can copy from other stores. So let's say that you've made a few really rocking designs and you just wanna go and cherry pick them and bring them right into the store, you can do that. Now copy designs, uh, uh, templates from other stores effectively. This is a super powerful function. What this is gonna allow you to do is take a design category and replace the generic text and replace the generic color. Let me give an example. Before we do this, I wanna make sure everybody understands what this is before we talk about the function. What I'm gonna do now is navigate to a store where I've deployed this particular tool. So if you go to this Cougars, this fake Cougar web store, you'll notice if I click on designs, I have the opportunity now to see a bunch of designs. Now, what do you see in common with these particular designs? Anybody? All right, if you're saying to yourself, okay, they're all red, they all say either Hillcrest or Cougars, and they all say 2011. So this took me about one second to do. Inksoft will allow you to choose a design template category and replace all of the generic text. So when we created these design templates, we purposely created them to say school name, mascot, year, so that can be replaced. So again, we clicked on that bottom most function. I'm gonna go back to it so you can see it one more time since this is so important. What I'm gonna do now is say, add more templates to store, copy designs from template. So what I'm gonna do now is click on that function. Here I have the opportunity now to select a product category. So if I wanna check football or baseball or basketball, I'll go ahead and make that designation. You can see here I have the ability to replace. 
replace school name with Vikings. So I'm gonna type in Vikings. Oftentimes you wanna leave this all capitalized because sometimes it's case sensitive. So I like to leave this all caps. Replace mascot, we're gonna put in, oh, instead of school name, we're gonna have, um, what are we, the Hillcrest. I'm gonna copy and paste this guy. So we'll put in Hillcrest here at the very top. And I can replace year, so I'll put in 2011, or I could even replace year and make this say champs. It doesn't have to be the year. Now you'll see here, when we created these, we created these in sort of a navy blue color. Notice how it automatically adopted the color of the particular web store that we're in. So we're in the Hillcrest Vikings, we chose this hexadecimal color to represent the web store. So automatically it's gonna say, do you wanna replace with the primary store color? And you have the ability to change that here by clicking on this little guy. And I can change the color. If I wanna make this blue or black or red, whatever it may be, I have the opportunity to replace those colors. Now when you click, um, and of course you can duplicate this, I can go grab senior class or band or softball and duplicate the same process. So I can do multiple saves. Now I'm not gonna do this now because this does take some time to render because Inksoft is gonna go and name drop every one of those templates. It's gonna index each one of those uniquely. I mean, it's a lot of database and processing, creating thumbnails, there's a lot of activities going on. So effectively, you would copy selected design templates to the store and it may take about 10 to 15 minutes to process all of those. I think you know, when I processed these, it probably took about 10 minutes and you can see that there's a ton of different templates here that are all personalized to that organization. So the real value and benefit of this is your end users, I mean, can go and grab a design template. It's already decorated, it's ready to go. So it, um, you know, it's really just a cool way to furnish and decorate these stores and have them already prepared with personalized designs. Now you can come back later and delete some of them if you don't want all, um, but I'd rather have, you know, 50 designs that are already populated and go and delete a few of them versus having to create 50 static designs from scratch. So very, very, very important function in this particular uh, you know, area here. So we're gonna go back to template management. We'll go back in time here. And this will give us the ability to do a few other powerful things. Now there's the ability to uh, select certain actions. So again, I can copy templates and assign them to a specific category. I could delete selected templates. So this is your ability to go and cherry pick. You know what? I don't want this specific design in the system. You know, this is an old logo for the school. They don't want this anymore. I can nuke it by clicking singular, delete, or I have the ability to uh, multi-delete. So I'm gonna grab these two files here. Actually, I'm gonna keep, keep the top one. So say I had, you know, I went and selected 20 designs. I could go to the action, click delete selected templates, and then select go. And it's gonna go ahead and process sort of all those batch commands. Now in this particular store, I don't have any design template categories because I didn't have any designs in here. These are all custom, but generally your template categories would be here on the left-hand side, I could go and choose templates that I upload in the system and actually add those to existing categories. So, now you also, I'm gonna to move to a different store here so you can see different, uh, what this would look like. So let's go back to our main store here. And in my main store, I have all of the design template categories published. So what I'm gonna do now is go to my store controls, back to designs. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to, to design categories. And there's a number of really cool things that you can do here in this particular environment. Uh, the first thing we can do is we have the ability to change the cover flow. So if we go back to our store here, the cover flow is effectively the thumbnail, the thumbnail images that represent the design template category. So um, these are pretty generic. You know, you have the ability to create your own custom thumbnails to represent product cate or, uh, design categories. So you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. These are all the standard sort of images that represent these, these design categories, but you can change that. So here we're in the design category list. This is where we can add, edit, and remove categories and uh, basically use these tools to manage you know, design templates. Now the first thing I wanna point out is this little button here, you gotta kinda hover your mouse over it to highlight, manage cover art. So if I click that, that again is gonna let us change the images that represent these particular design template categories. So if I click that function, I can now replace with an image. Now, if you were in our webinar yesterday, if you've ever attended any of our webinars, you know that everything, sort of the rule of thumb in Inksoft is everything is square. So with that said, when I click on a design template category, do you see how these cover flow images, these are square. So when you lay out something, you design something, do it in a square orientation. So um, effectively, what you're gonna do is you're gonna upload cover art. So you can see if you hover your mouse over one of these categories, maybe you wanna replace something. Maybe I'm not satisfied with one of these um, 
you know, one of these files, you have the ability to replace it. This is pretty much going to be typical and common when you are upload or creating a custom category. So you can see backgrounds right now, clubs, you know, these don't have categories, so I can replace and upload a custom uh, cover art file. So pretty straightforward, right? All right, let's go back to our uh, design template management uh, category tools. And uh, as you can see here, I have the ability to add a design into a category. I can create a new category. I can delete a category. So oftentimes, you know, you may want to do a quick survey. Maybe you've subscribed to all of the design templates, but there's one category that you want to delete. You have the ability to go and make those selections. So here I can say, you know what, I don't want to display reptiles. So I can select that and I can click the little red X button and that's going to delete that particular category. I can also replace the category image. So you can see here I have the ability to rename this. So if I want to change the name, I can do that by clicking that little uh, wrench icon. So you can see I can change this from reptile to snakes if I wanted to. I also have the ability to add designs. This is a really cool function. So if I click add designs, maybe you have a graphic that you just want to add and associate with this particular template category. So I can click on that tool, add to category. It's going to let me go and see all of the designs that I have in my system. And I can say, you know what, I want to add this tattoo banner. So I'm going to go ahead and make that particular selection. And there's a button here that says add selected templates to category. I'll go ahead and make that designation. Now we've just added a tattoo banner right into uh, the reptile category in Inksoft. So really cool way to go. You know, if you've uploaded a bunch of cool new design templates, you know, give them a home. You know, organize them with uh, associating them to a uh, category. And you can see that I've just done that now. So uh, we also have the ability to click plus and we can add a new child category. So the green plus symbol will let you add a new category. So the core category for this is am animals. We have bird, farm, fish, insects, pets, reptiles, wild. Let's say that I want to add, you know, horses or, you know, roosters, whatever it may be. I can add a new category. Uh, and into the system. So this is where you're going to manage all of your design template categories, cover art, you're going to add and associate new designs into existing categories. Pretty powerful function in here. So I, I recommend doing a quick survey, maybe deleting something that you would find unsavory. Um, you know, if you need to filter content, you know, this is where you're going to make those selections. So you can see that process now inside of the system. Okay, going back to designs, um, you will also have a drop down and a selection for design category cover art and design subscriptions. Now periodically you're going to want to go to design subscriptions because we may surprise you with some uh, art content that you can add for free, design templates. So right now I have chosen to subscribe to the Inksoft template list and also the school template list. There's two different categories of artwork that are in the system. So make sure that both of these are selected and go ahead and save those changes and that's going to give you access to all of those uh, current design templates that are built into the system. Uh, now, as we add new design templates, you can, of course, continue to subscribe to those by clicking that particular function. Now, with clip art, as you can see, we're in a specific store. We're in Acme Apparel. So, again, from the store controls, I can upload custom clip art. So, if you don't want to use my account and the controls in my account, you can use those in the drop down area here. Again, there's shortcuts for everything. I have the ability to create a custom clip art gallery. That's the very first thing we talked about. I can remove, I can create static designs by using my clip art. I can even take, this is a pretty powerful function, a new function. I can go and cherry pick designs. So I'm going to go, in fact, I'll show you this now. Let's go to a store that has no clip art published to it whatsoever. So let's see if um, Bling Tees, Rhinestone T-shirts, let's see if there's any clip art, custom clip art published to this particular store. And there is. Again, you can see that we have the logo for that particular store. Let's see, let's see which one will have no clip art. Let's see, let's go to mascot gear maybe. Hopefully we won't strike out here, let's see. Okay, cool. So I don't have a custom gallery of artwork here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and cherry pick a bunch of these designs. I'm gonna say, you know what, I want this eagle, I want this, um, these skulls, this helmet, this um, crown. And we're going to go publish them to the store right now. So I just selected a bunch of designs. In this drop down, I can go and cherry pick a store. So that's called Mascot Gear. So let's go make the selection for that particular store. So here's that store. I'm going to go ahead and copy those pieces of clip art to that particular store. And you can see now the page is going to refresh. And we have now just copied all of those elements to the store. Let's see if it's uh, the cache will update. 
As you can see, it automatically grabbed the logo for that store, populated into this particular area. I can make that selection, and you'll now see those clipart elements that I just selected now being automatically available in this store. So great time-saving tool to uh, populate graphics into this store. Didn't take any time at all, and you can see that those show showcase now. So I believe that is about it as it relates to artwork management. Let me share a few other tips with you, and then we'll get to your questions, and then we'll let you break for the day. It's Friday, right? Hopefully everybody has cracked a beer already while they're watching our uh, web training event. Lord knows I am. All right, so let's talk about getting custom artwork into um, Inksoft. So here we have a vector file. So if I go view, outline, here we have a uh, rattlesnake uh, head. So I'm going to go and reposition this. This is a vector rattlesnake. And what I'm going to do now is go back to preview. And so this is the vector path. So this is a pretty you know, complex design. You can see all the nodes and drawing points in this particular file. Uh, the beauty is Inksoft is fully capable of uploading this into the system. So what I'm going to do now, I have this design. I can do a number of things. I can save this as a EPS file, encapsulated postscript, which is a vector file. My preference is SVG, scalable vector graphic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go File, Save As. This is of co course is in Adobe Illustrator. I believe in Krill, you'll go File, Export, and uh, choose SVG from the drop-down menu. So for format, I'm going to choose Scalable Vector Graphic. I'm going to also name this and save it to my desktop. So I'm going to put in, um, you know, I'm going to name this uh, Diamondback. I'm going to go ahead and save that to my desktop. So pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and export that as an SVG file. That's now on my desktop, saved as an SVG file, and you can see that here. So what I'm going to do now, I can do a number of things to get this into the system. We've already talked about some of these controls. So if I want to upload store clip art, I can click Browse, and that's going to let me browse for this Diamondback SVG file on the desktop. Click Open, and that's going to go ahead and process this file. Now, this does take you know 30 seconds, 60 seconds, but it's uploading the file, it's counting the colors, it's creating a thumbnail. So there's a lot of action. It's indexing it. There's a lot of action going on when you uh, upload these files. Now, depending on your browser, some browsers you actually have to refresh your browser window. I think Safari is guilty of that, whereas uh, Firefox and Chrome will automatically refresh. So some of these things are a browser by browser uh, scenario. So I'm on Safari for Mac. So you can see that the page refreshed and giddy up. This, this puts all your clip art in the system alphabetically. And here you can see we have zero for Baseball Mom. Well, you know, I can go ahead and delete that. I don't want Baseball Mom Rhinestone uh, in here anyways. So I'll go ahead and nuke that. So here you can see we have our Diamondback theme. Here's our vector Diamondback theme. Pretty sweet, right? So now I have the ability to do what? I can go ahead and click that, right? And what's it going to let me do? It's going to let me edit and make modifications to this. So in, uh, in uh, Illustrator, this, is a this was a two-color file, black and white. You can see now, two-color scalable vector graphic. So it actually counted the colors. And now I have a few controls here. When I click on the actual file, the thumbnail, I have the ability to add it to stores. So if I want to say, you know what, this ought to go in Hillcrest Vikings, custom cheer gear, etc., I can go and choose the appropriate stores, and I can say save changes. I've just automatically made that design available in those particular stores. Well, again, we have these four options here. Customize design, create a static design, remove from all of my stores, remove from this store. So what I'm going to do now is customize design. What do you think that's going to do? It's going to propel us right into the Inksoft Power Design Studio. Now, this is a great way to convert, again, convert clip art into a design template. Now, I want to point out that sometimes it's easiest just to go into the design studio because I'm treating it like virtual graphic design software. And let's imagine this. Your client, you know, and I'm going to delete this from the screen so you can see the magic of this. I'm going to go to Upload Image, and I'm going to go and browse by clicking Select Image. I'm going to go browse for that particular um, Diamondback scalable vector graphic. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue, and I'm going to upload that right into Inksoft. Now you can see, this is going to take a second because again, it's counting the colors, so it would know how to charge your client um, appropriately. Um, but again, we can upload the scalable vector graphic right into the design studio. So you can either upload it into Inksoft uh, in the controls that we just displayed, or you can do it right in this particular area. The point is, it's going to save dynamically. So here's this two color vector file. Guess what? I can recolor it, so if I want to change the white, you know, and totally tweak this out. I have the full function, um, and I can do that, as you can see on screen. Pretty slick, right? Um, we like to brag about this because uh, there's not much, uh, not many technologies that can do this. So what I'm going to do at this junction is we are going to, at this stage now, create another design template. So I can add text to this. You know, I could put in Arizona Diamondbacks, or whatever it may be. 
And I can, uh, of course, uh, assign a font to this. I can curve it. Remember, anything that you create and that you save is gonna have intelligence. So this curve is displayed. I even wanna point out something even more powerful is the decoration area and size. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make this a left chest design. This is a left chest theme. Maybe I'll go and make this a little bit bigger. Okay, cool, I'm satisfied with the way this looks. Let's zoom in. Yep, that's sweet. When you save this, it's gonna have memory, member of the product and of the imprint area. So let's go change the product just so you can see how powerful this tool set is. Let's go and change, uh, let's make this a hooded sweatshirt. So I'm gonna make this a hooded sweatshirt and I'm gonna actually give this a very distinct color. We're gonna make this on an ash colored hooded sweatshirt. It's full front, I'm gonna make the decoration area left chest again. I'm gonna maybe make this a little bit bigger so it maximizes that left chest area, center it up, you know, make it pretty. Well, when I save this, it's gonna remember the product, it's gonna remember the color of the product, it's gonna remember the space and the size and every little detail uh, that I'm orienting. This is insane. So what I'm gonna do now is click save. We're gonna put in example and click save your template. So again, I've just created a design template it's saved, and now we're gonna go move on to the Manage Template screen. That was a quick refresh here and a wrong one. What I'm gonna do now is maneuver down. Let's go see if we can't find that particular design. It should be on the second page here. We navigate to the wrong store. Excuse me, let me go back to my core demo site here. And let's go to My Account. And remember, under my designs, that image would have saved. And naturally it didn't. I can't explain that. I have a domain name issue here. I gotta put in the www in front of demo.ingsoft.com, so pardon me on that one. All right, folks, let's open it up to q and A. I I think uh, hopefully you've learned a lot about managing design templates and clip art in Inksoft. Let's open it up to your questions and um, then we'll depart for Friday.